you have become famous, or perhaps some people might say notorious, in India and uh, in America also, to a very considerable degree, for saying that the spiritual quest is a load of nonsense, uh, that the, uh, the gurus and spiritual teachers are con men, and so on. Now, you've now come to Australia, and particularly to the city of Sydney, where it is said that people here don't ask what is the meaning of life, they ask, where can I find waterfront property? And uh, in Australia, people who are on what might be called a spiritual quest of some kind, following meditation or looking for some kind of enlightenment, are very much a minority who feel themselves to be breaking out from a, a, a very heavy culture in which most people never think beyond the first football match or the next football match or the next beer and the educated ones are spent all their time talking about politics or the stock market. Now in this sort of situation would you would you still say that the people who are looking for uh, some different sort of culture, a more spiritual culture, are on a completely false line? What I emphasize to those who seek that so not to see, is what makes them think that they are superior to others who are pursuing um, sensual uh, experiences. And they want to feel that they are superior to others, and these so-called religious experiences are no different from any other experiences. The instrument which we all use to experience is born out of sensuality. So the mind is, can survive only through the constant demand to experience the same, same things again and again and again. But I don't see any reason why they should feel superior to those who are uh, pursuing the material goals. Basically, our goals are the same. The instrument which we use to achieve our goals is matter, which is thought. They may say that they are pursuing spiritual goals, but the instrument is exactly the same. And their interest in achieving their spiritual goals is also to better their material needs. I don't know if But that's the reason why I say that there is no reason for them to feel superior to others who are interested in buying uh, waterfront uh, penthouse or, or uh, even a uh, skyscraper, uh, what do you call it? It's penthouse, I yes, suppose, yes. is the, the top one. And what makes them think that they are different and better than those people who are pursuing the ordinary uh, pursuits of life? Uh, our great comedian, Dame Edna Everidge, recently said that her, her husband's motto was that you're nearer to God in a penthouse than anywhere else on earth. Would you say that's uh, in fact? Fortunately, she was not a woman. But, <laughs> but uh, you, you wouldn't think there was anything wrong with that or anything wrong with that than anything else. See, your heaven is the highest penthouse that you can imagine. So those who are interested in reaching heaven, creating heaven on the face of this earth, are responsible for turning this paradise, nature's creation, not parallel paradise, into heaven. And you we are not going to succeed to create heaven on this earth. That's all. So there's another kind of a penthouse, higher and higher. I don't know if at all it exists anywhere. <laughs> So you wouldn't say that they were worse, but they're just, they're just they're pursuing no a similar thing. They're, they're no different from others who are pursuing uh, the plane, you see. So God, the truth, the reality, whatever you want to call it, is the ultimate pleasure. And you are not ready to accept that. That is the ultimate pleasure. Now, if they did accept it, what would happen then? Do you think they would in some way stop, think again, or become like the... No. If this is the only reality, and there is no such thing as ultimate reality, it is easy to function in this world very efficiently. So, there is no reality at all, as far as I am concerned. There is no way you can experience the reality of anything, the fact that you are sitting next to me, or that there is somebody here talking. Even this 
reality which we take for granted, we have no way of experiencing this. So, but we have to accept the reality of the world as it is imposed on us. And if we don't, we will end up, you see, the ruling. But we have to accept to function sanely and intelligently in this world. That helps us uh, to fit into this reality of the world as it is imposed on us. When once we are freed from the demand to be something other than what we actually are, and if that energy is released, it becomes very, very simple and easy for us to function in this world sanely and intelligently. That's all that I'm pointing to. Well, that's uh, uh, very interesting. I, uh, I've heard you uh, make rather rude remarks about such things as health foods and so on. Uh, would you say that uh, would you say that certain kinds of diet to leave the body more natural than others, uh, make it more function more naturally? I don't think that the demand for uh, very nutritious and healthy food is no different from the demand to have varieties of girls or varieties of men for you. You may not like it, but when once, you see, you have everything that you need or ask for is there, the question arises, is that all? When you lose faith in something beyond, this becomes so very important to us. The moment you are concerned about, you see, health code, that is the beginning of the sickness. One who is healthy would never think in terms of health food at all. We would think just in terms of common sense. So what we need is some energy for this body. That's all that is mm. necessary for this body. And that's why the, the nutritionists who very often think that I am very crazy. When I say that uh, this body can survive on sawdust and glue. Yeah. The glue is for giving some flavor to the sawdust. When I made this statement, uh, a friend of mine who is considered to be a top nutritionist, he said that Charlie is talking some nonsense, absolute rubbish. There was one Russian woman who lived in Leningrad during the Leningrad seas. She said, I survived on that kind of food, even worse food than that. I could eat anything. I had no health problems there. Now I live in the United States and I eat food. It's a very nutritious food, rich food. I am sick all the time. Isn't that interesting? No. You see, I'm not recommending this to anybody, you see. What is possible for me must be possible for somebody else also. What's wrong with me? I'm 72 years old. I eat, I eat very little food and what I need food for is to give energy to this body. Oh, this is so when once, you see, the, the pleasure movement is not there, the varieties of food also is of benefit. That's all that I'm saying. I'm not for a moment saying that you should free yourself from the pursuit of pleasure. But all are the same. Whether you pursue God or enlightenment or ultimate reality, or you see a perfect, well-balanced, with natural food or healthy food, they're all the same. Yes, the sir. society may consider that certain actions of ours are not socially acceptable. Certain other actions uh, are socially acceptable. So what is wrong with, you see, a man wanting varieties of men, varieties of girls, uh, for fun? And so you don't want to place the demand for varieties of food on the same level as that. But basically, essentially, and fundamentally, the demand for varieties of food is no different from a man demanding to have fun with varieties of girls or a woman demanding to have fun. Well, it seems a great deal of, uh, of, of um, simple, straightforward common sense and honesty is what you're recommending. Uh, the thing that I'm not recommending anything. Watch your, I'm what, not what recommending anything. I'm not interested in freeing anybody from anything. As a matter of fact, those people who are after or pursuing the permanent pleasure. That's all that they are interested in. Permanent happiness. We'll be better off hanging around gurus than coming to visit me. They are not going to get anything here. This is not what they are interested in. So they are interested in some comforters and they are providing them with those comforters and they charge them. So they will be better off there than coming here. I am not interested in freeing them from their gurus at all. 
There is a demand for this. So there is a market for this kind of thing. That is why they are flourishing it. I am not marketing anything. If you are really interested in understanding what really the problem is, why you are pursuing all these things, why you are interested in the quest for permanent happiness, why you are interested in the quest for permanent pleasure, is all that I am interested in pointing out. See, the instrument that is involved in this demand and uh, attaining the goals which we are interested in is not the instrument to achieve that goal, the thought. That is the reason why I say, emphasize all the time, over and over again, ad nauseum, that thought is fascist, fascist in its nature, in its content, in its expression, and in its action, because it wants to control, shape everything, to protect itself. It's all that it is interested in. So, we are not ready to accept that, that instrument, thought, or whatever you the mind can only create problems, cannot help us to solve the problems. And I'm talking all the time. This that's, is what I, yeah, that's, that's what that's what we're for the tutorial <laughs> zone. That's okay. <coughs> uh, if uh, you you've described, I've I've, I've heard uh, recordings and uh, things of you describing a time in your own life uh, which you call calamity because. Uh, you say it didn't, uh, all the things you'd been expecting and striving for after that were suddenly shattered. And that was very much what you described, it, 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 as I understand it, as a return to the really natural state of the body with its natural functioning of a kind that most of us are unable to, to see at all. When I use the phrase the natural state, they always put that in the framework of enlightenment or some such thing, or God realization or self realization. When I use that phrase, natural state, I am referring only to natural functioning of this living organism. When once this is freed from the stranglehold of the culture, the value system, it begins to function in a very natural way. It is freed from, the, I don't like to use the word freed, but for a want of a more uh, expressive, meaningful word, let me use it. Unquote, from this totality of man's thoughts and experiences felt by everybody before you. And what it is left with is this extraordinary living quality and it relies for its functioning sanely and intelligently on the sensory perceptions and not the sensual activity of the mind. The mind is only interested in sensual activity. So the, anything you are interested in, whether it is a spiritual goal or a material goal, always falls in the area of sensuality. We are not ready to accept it. When once it is freed from that, its only interest is to function very efficiently and uses senses to, I don't like to use the, the word experience, um, very efficiently. Functions is a good word. Functions very efficiently. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, it is all, what all it is interested in is not the demand for permanence, but to live from moment to moment. It is the body that is functioning from moment to moment. And it's the sensory activity is always in frames. You know? So there is no continuity, there is no demand for permanence there. So whereas your mind or your spiritual pursuits or the demand for permanent happiness is interested in permanence. There is no such thing as permanence at all. It's constantly changing. The body takes its birth all the time and it is dying all the time. So birth and death is a simultaneous process for this body. When once a stage reaches, when the body cannot renew itself, it goes through a process called the clinical death. So actually there is no birth for this body, so there can't be any death for this body. We are interested in only experiencing what we call death. You are not going to preside over your own death, the death of this body. So nothing will be there. The experiencing structure has first got to come to an end before what we call clinical death takes place. So it is not the death that we experience, it is the 
the ending of you as you know yourself and as you experience yourself. If for some reason, some individual captures that, you see, uh, within the framework of his experiencing structure, the fear of coming to an end, which is defined as death, it becomes part of our experiencing structure. But that experience is something extraordinary. No? So it is something like uh, any other uh, mystical experience. So that helps us to look at things differently, to feel things differently, to experience, it, to experience things differently. That is all that it can do. But what is called death is just a name given to the condition of the body. See, what we experience is not our death. It is not the death of our fellow being, whom we call a dead person, a corpse. What we experience is the void created by the demise of that particular individual and the impossibility of maintaining the same relationship from them. So that is what we call death, but death can never, never be experienced because the body has no such thing as death. Now, the, 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 the interesting thing that uh, I heard about your first uh, transition to this natural state was that it was, in for you, very painful in many respects. You see, this is uh, uh, something that lately I have been using this simile because I happened to be in the United States when this earthquake hit California. It is something like an earthquake. When once it hits, it is not for the benefit of people who have lost their fear and once it's not um, for the benefit of those people who have lost everything, their properties, everything. So, but that is from the nature's point of view, if I may put it that way, it is trying to readjust itself to a new sort of equilibrium. When once through some strange chance or luck or whatever word you want to use, this is freed from the stranglehold of the thought and its machinations. It has to readjust itself to a new way of functioning. It's a very, very painful process. If it can put an end to you, you may not come back. The body may not you see, uh, be able to uh, survive even. It's so shattering a blow, just like it's the, the shaft of the lightning hitting. And what is left after that is something which you have no way of finding out for yourself or uh, give expression. When you, the separateness from the totality of life around is not there anymore. The, we feel separate from see, the life around us through the help of thought, through the help of knowledge we have. When once you see that movement of knowledge which separates you from the totality of things is not there, you have no way of experiencing the fact that you are alive or dead. You may say that I am alive, I am talking, I am responding to your questions. What I am saying is, is intelligent. I don't know. To make any sense yeah. out of this. But you are the one that is creating me. I have no way of creating this anymore through the help of my senses. Because senses cannot create the totality of the body. The coordinator, which was an artificial coordinator there, is gone. So the sensory activity is a disconnected, disjointed one. Each one is functioning independently. So there is no way you can uh, make any, uh, any way you can create the totality of this body and experience. So that's the reason why I say that you are the one that is creating me. I have no image of myself. Even if I artificially create an image of myself and try to experience it, it is not there the next one. Yeah. Since I have no image of my own, there is no way I can have the image of anybody. Now, this is very interesting because the fact is that I, sitting here, and anyone else watching this program would still say that in spite of this, there's no doubt at all that you are the same person. 
Uh, whereas what you are describing could very, could very easily be mistaken for a description of madness. Uh, would you say, well, how would you say that the very same person I see sitting here, I, I create sitting here, is different yeah, from a schizophrenic? I, I think, you see, the, the line of demarcation between the madman and this individual sitting here is, uh, the line of demarcation is very, very thin, very, very thin. But uh, the, the only difference seems to be between a raving man here and this who is also a raving maniac of some sort, is that he's not in conflict with the society around him. Not that we see this individual has accepted the world as it is, not in conflict with the society around him because the world cannot be any different. So there is no attempt on my part to fit into that value system or the society created by our culture. Knowing very well that, that this is a mad world we are living in, but there is nothing that we can do about it. And once the demand to change something here, huh, the demand to change the world around you also comes here. So that the madman is probably still trying to change something here or something out no, there. No, it's, I, not, it's just not going I on. think we are solely and wholly responsible for those pushing those people to become functional. You see, uh, they have given. And our interest is to see that they become functional so that the society can go on. We are actually, factually pushing them to commit suicide. We are responsible for that. They don't want, you see, to fit into the framework, the value system which we have. Now, this is the, the reason I ask this question, and the reason, the, one reason why your arrival in Sydney at this moment is so very opportune, is that there is just forming here in Sydney a group of psychiatrists and psychotherapists of various kinds who find themselves confronted with large numbers of people who have broken out from the uh, materialistic culture, just to use that phrase, have started various kinds of spiritual exercises, and almost immediately, while many of them go off into uh, months and months of meditation, nothing much happens, some get struck with the, something like your earthquake. And, 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 and the psychiatrist wants to know what to do. Should he pump and put drugs? They get, it isn't that the psychiatrist tries to control them. They go to him. Well, the basic question which we all have to ask is what kind of a human being you want in this world? What kind of So the psychiatrist has to ask that first. Ask that too. question. Yes. So we have unfortunately placed before mankind the model of a perfect being. That perfect being is the spiritual teacher and his behavior patterns. And the whole value system is born out of him. And our insistence and demand on the part of the culture and the value system to fit them all into that mold is bound to fail. Because every individual is unique. Unique. Yes. Nature is not interested in creating the, the, the human species in one common whole. It is interested in creating different species. It does not use anything as a model. That's where we have gone wrong. Because of the fear that the, the status quo of our culture or society or whatever you want to call it cannot be maintained if we do not fit all these people into that value system. I am not against the value system at all. The demand to fit everybody into a common mode, which is the value system, is responsible for the breaking up of all those, breaking down of many people here. They, they have given. And the so-called normal man, if there is any, uh, he lives in hope and dies in hope. One day, he is going to successfully fit himself into that value system, very successfully, and live in harmony. And the mad people have given up, and so we are pushing them to make them functional, and it is that very thing that is pushing them to success. So if there is anybody in whom this kind of a calamity, or whatever word, word you want to use, of the, is not society. 
so insofar as one does anything, I'll leave them alone and think it might sort itself we, out. We, we cannot leave them alone. They, they, are, they are happy and they are content with, uh, with themselves. And why we okay. should push them to make a function? So that's our problem. So some of these psychiatrists uh, from the SIM, I put this question, pose this question to them. And one of the top neurosurgeons visited me every had a long conversation. And I asked him this question, who is normal according to you? You or your patient who comes for your health? He said, statistically speaking, we are not. There is no such thing as a normal person. No. And then why the hell you are running that C institute for those very people? Families do not want this. They push them here. And the help they can get from us is not even to us. So it is a living. For you to accept that is true. And what you are saying seems to be very true, very correct. But we want to believe that you are wrong. <laughs> because it's very dangerous what you are saying. So my interest in pointing to those people, the scientists or the psychologists, they have come to the end of their tell. But if they are interested in solving their problems, they have to solve the problems within that frame and not look to these religious people who don't have any answers for them. Let them do what they like. Let them sell those shoddy pieces of goods in the marketplace, thrive on the gullibility and credibility of people. We have, there is a sort of void created in our society too. And I maintain all the political systems are nothing but the outgrowth of the same religious thinking of man. There is a danger when all these ideologies fail to deliver the goods. The religious people will step into that see, void created and destroy the possibility of finding if they have, if we have any answers to solve our problems which are responsible because of the religious thinking of man and all the other systems, even our value system. Our legal structure, everything is born out of the religious thinking of man. It has not helped us uh, to understand and function in this world fairly and It is that that is responsible for the problems. It is that that has created the problems. And why we want to fit ourselves in. Would you say that, uh, I, I would certainly agree with most of what you're saying about that and pointing out as you do so relentlessly that religious and spiritual systems are just another form of ideology is I think very good. Would you say that um, so-called primitive or um, tribal peoples are likely to therefore be living closer to the natural state than we are or not? No, I don't think so. There is no way we can go back to their way of life and their way of thinking. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I very often say the cave man, when he used the jawbone of an ass to destroy his neighbor for whatever reason, he laid the foundation for all the atomic weapons which we have. In the already an extension of, already started. It's an extension of the same. Uh -huh. yes. So when I met a bird on reserve, he was lost in his uh, peace foundation, bird on reserve, peace foundation, and all that kind of a thing, and uh, anti bomb and all that. I asked my question How can you? Are you ready to do away with the poison? The hydrogen bomb is an extension of the poison. Are you ready? No. You have to draw the line somewhere. You see. And the moment you introduce one of the, we get into trouble. So are we ready? I'm not for a moment saying that. You see, you should do away with the poison. It's an extension of the same. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to resolve this problem? It's not so easy. I'm sure it's not easy. See, and, the uh, humanity is to be saved from the chaos of its own making. It has to find some kind of answers, not new ideas, new way of thinking, or go back, see, back to Christianity, back to the ancient heritage of this country, that country. They have all failed. Huh? Yeah. So if we cannot come up with the answers for our questions, we are lost. So, lost. in fact, I think a lot of the people who have become seekers are really trying to find something new. Then what you're saying is that they're looking in the wrong direction No, it's altogether. not. They are looking for help 
the people who cannot be of any help to us. One thing that uh, you you said that a while ago was that uh, the body once the the bomb once one becomes it gets the thought out of the way and the body is there and it's it has no it it, it you don't have to realize a, a relationship between the body and, and and the rest of the universe. It's already realized. It is one. So it. Hurting your neighbor, fellow people, is hurting yourself. That's why I always give the simile about the cellular structure of your body. This, the cells are not interested in oneness of life, unity of life, brotherhood, love thy neighbor as thyself. It is those that are responsible for all the misery in this world. So trying to impose it. Impose, love thy neighbor as thyself. As, a, as an outsider. Has killed millions and millions of more people than all the recent together. But the survival of this particular cell depends upon the survival of the cell that is next to it. It has to cooperate there. And uh, would you say that... So hurting my fellow being is hurting myself. Sure. Yeah. Not psychologically, not romantically, not poetically. It is physically hurting me. Then I will not hurt my fellow being. Now, is there in that body, a direct awareness of that fact. Awareness? Uh, a direct reaction? I don't know, I, I have uh, some so difficulty the, yeah. to accept that word awareness. Oh, it's, it's awareness is, is an integral part or the integral uh, thought of the activity of the brain. Sure. So it cannot be separated from the activity of the brain and use it as an instrument to bring about any change. No, that that is the reason I, why I mentioned that. that, you see, all the animals are choicelessly aware. See, that is not an instrument to help us to bring about any change. What I am emphasizing is that there is nothing to be changed here. It's already, hmm? it's already it is not interested in knowing anything. It is not interested in learning anything from our ideas of how to keep the body healthy. Now, would you say that people who get psychic, so-called psychic perceptions, were, were tuning in somehow a bit, just a little bit, to that when, to that non non duality, but then then tying it up again into the world, world of thought? When once uh, this structure is not caught up in that duality, these questions don't arise. The psychic, uh, you see, all the animals are psychic. They are uh -huh. very one. Yes. They are very clear one. But we have unfortunately made them into spiritual uh, experiences. Uh -huh. So uh, that they are very essential for the survival of this living organism. It is not for any other purpose. You know? They are, they are extraordinarily clairvoyant. I don't like to use the word clairvoyant, but uh, all those things are necessary for the survival of the living organism. Now, they, if in some individuals their thought uh, slows down, they experience these things and attribute them to some spiritual uh, qualities, but basically that is no different from any other functioning of this body. It's just like, eh? So Electric when I go for a walk with my friends, yes. for example, this lady, just look, I say, don't think. Thinking frightens you. If you depend upon your sensory activity, it is a lot easier to function very efficiently there. As I was saying the other day, when you are crossing the road, the vibration of the, the automobile there she sets this body in the same vibration. The smell of the gasoline, it measures the distance. The eye measures the distance. So it's like a dog trying to cross the road, see, without any problem there. The moment you see you think that you will be run over by the car, you have created a problem. You are a frightened person. You see, you are creating a problem for yourself and a problem for the dog. So there is a, a chance that the dogs also will get killed. But in most cases, uh, the, 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 the only way you, you can function very efficiently is to depend upon your senses rather than think about things. And tell this, as you say, that most of us are not in touch with, not in with touch that, that reality degree of sensual You reality. don't have to do a thing about it. 
Its interest is survival under any circumstances. To, to survive and to reproduce one like this, it's not interested in any other activity. It is not interested in spiritual experiences at all. Now, would you say that, uh, that uh, you have said, I think, that, that in a sense this is a constant process of dying that goes on, and I'm, the people that I've met who seem to, to also have had something of the same collapse into, out of thought into this kind of awareness, the, for the first stages of it, as you, you yourself said, it was very painful, the earthquake, they often are very... Um, upset and unable to cope in the world. They're, they're, one day, since you found yourself putting the slippers in the refrigerator. They are, they are, they are the, just a tremor stage. That's a tremor stage. The, the tremors do not indicate that there is going to be an earthquake. Uh, uh, the one thing we would love to think it? that the earthquake, you know, seismologists can predict uh, with exactness and precision when an earthquake is going to occur. You know, they are all talking about the big earthquake in California, but when actually it hits, nobody would know in advance. So I'm not, uh, you can't be prepared for that kind of a thing. So you uh, have, then have somehow the, 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 what has happened is not that your thoughts has deserted you. I mean, you, you think brilliantly, obviously, but it is used, it is not strangling you. It is used when you need it. It comes out when you need it, you, not before. Not me. I am not well, sure. It's you. You do. You are in response also, to me. Yes. In response to you, this is, is yeah, yeah. I was uh, telling, and just before we started this, you are the ventilator. So you are, it, it looks as if I am giving the answers, but actually the answers are yours. So all the questions are born out of the answers you already have, and the answers you think I am giving are your own answers. Oh, yeah. That's very flattering, yeah, and I would, uh, I would love. So that's the reason. If you ever want a job as a ventriloquist dummy, <laughs> you, know to, you know where to come. Uh, the uh, so, so would you be able? And what I like about the way you, you do this is that you take a word and you know it's going to misle be misleading, but you nevertheless put it in inverted commas and use it in a way that gives people a feeling. It's as best you can. It's very difficult to do, uh, to give a feeling of what it's like. Can you give a, uh, any, say anything more about this feeling that you try to convey by things happening in frames? Is that anything to do with the, the fact that the body is dying and coming back, dying and coming back? So every time. time the thought is born, you are born. Uh, the thought is matter. Mm -hmm. It is the matter that creates this body. But the, thought, the matter cannot remain as matter for long. It has to become part of the energy. So thought also is energy. When once you give substance to the thought and maintain the continuity of it so that you can maintain your identity uh, forever, the possibility of that is uh, becoming part of energy is lost. So, so the search for permanence is the you demand say. for permanence is the cause of man's tragedy. William Blake, the poet, said that, that man has a character in one of his poems who represents the power of thought, and he says that, that he, I sought for a joy without pain and for a solid without fluctuation, and that's the way to disaster. You that's say. just poetry and romantic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but would you say what? Surely, 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 an animal is uh, is also uh, an animal withdraws from pain, doesn't it? it? It knows how to protect itself. Yes. Pain is the healer. <laughs> we are not ready to accept that. Would there you say pain. a little bit more about that? Huh? Would you say a little bit more about that? That's all that is there. The physical fear, the psychological yeah. pain, is the demand to free yourself from the pain. See, it is that that is making this uh, simple physical pain very accurate. So, you are, it, well, I think that uh, it's been an extraordinarily interesting conversation, uh, and, and uh, I'm slightly bothered with the thought by having it for myself, uh, but uh, since you say that it is uh, part of the uh, whole process that you, from moment to moment, you die, I think it would be very appropriate to say thank you very much, and uh, as I say here in Australia, have a nice die. What, what did, <laughs> you, have a nice day. Mike, you said something, yes. you see how the Australians would put it. You recorded it for me. How would they? 
Greet each other. Oh, how Australians greet each other? I said, well, I'm not Australian. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an Englishman, so uh, I've only really learned to do it. They say, good day, mate. How are you? How are you going? <laughs> good day, mate. How are you going? What's the answer? Well, I think the answer is have a nice day. And uh, in your case, it's have a nice day. Beautiful, mate. <laughs> good, thank you. Beautiful dance, yes. Beautiful dance. <laughs> thank you very much.